you talked about soft power, in, you know, the abundance yeah. of, of energy increasing America's soft power and hard power. Right. But isn't like fracking bad for the environment? Doesn't it also ruin our soft power in the eyes of the entire world if we're contributing more uh, to global warming? And the answer is a little bit complex. Just, just one syllable words yeah. here, because <laughs> I, I have a tiny um, brain. <laughs> the first thing of the many conventional wisdoms out there that are wrong is the sense that this fracking necessarily has more carbon emissions than other kinds of production. It totally depends on the quality of the resource. And in fact, a lot of the oil produced in North Dakota, if it weren't for flaring of the natural gas associated with it, um, that actually would have a lower, lower carbon footprint than, than other kinds of conventional oil. So the problems with the environment or the potential problems with the environment come when we look at things like methane emissions um, and other environmental problems that have to do with uh, with water or other. And and these are all issues that are very real and they do pose threats to the environment. But we have learned more and more about what can be done to mitigate those threats or to control them. In fact, President Obama put in place a law about trying to uh, curtail methane emissions. And that's incredibly important from the perspective of whether or not fracking is actually going to be a net positive um, for the country when we look at not just energy production, but we look at environment and we look at other metrics. So yes, there are environmental concerns, but I, I'm a believer that there is a Goldilocks solution. There is a way to produce more in an environmentally sustainable way. And this is where the whole question of what's the appropriate level of regulations comes in. I mean, as we get better at fracking, and what you're talking yeah. about is technological advances that allow us to do fracking uh, without the sort of harmful consequences. Um, that have been the case in the past. You know, as we get better at this, mm-hmm. uh, does it also, ironically, kind of take us away from renewable sources, um, and it takes our focus away from trying to pursue those avenues? Well, there's a very basic reality that renewable energy and natural gas, not so much oil, but natural gas, are competitors. And so the low, low price of natural gas that we've seen over the last uh, several years, maybe 10 years or so, which is on account of the, the fracking boom, that has, of course, made it harder for solar and wind to compete because mm-hmm. they're competing for kind of the same market. And when you bring down the price of, of natural gas, you know, it, it's obviously makes it more difficult for solar and wind. But I think we're actually reaching a stage where solar and wind um, can be competitive in certain locations. And so I don't believe that these things need to come at one another's expense. And in fact, there's a lot of synergy in many countries, in the United States being one of them, between these these fuels. Because as you know, solar and wind are intermittent. So they don't, the sun doesn't shine all the time, the wind doesn't blow. And when that's not true, there needs to be another source. Mm-hmm. And that other source of energy to provide electricity or power is natural gas, or it's coal, um, or it could be nuclear. And um, coal is obviously the least environmental friendly, and so the more natural gas that plays that role, the better the, the overall environmental footprint is going to be. And actually, incidentally, that is why the US per capita carbon emissions has come way, way down in the last uh, several years. And it is because, because we have decline moved of coal. the decline of coal, which was made possible by this boom in natural gas on account of fracking.